Hi everyone, welcome to part 2. Okay, so to continue with uh, a discussion of the principle of two weaknesses, it's also important to consider that the various principles of endgame sometimes go hand in hand with each other. In this next example, White's better pawn structure is past B pawn here uh, versus Black's backward D pawn. Combined with control of key squares create a certain advantage which is converted through the use of the principle of two weaknesses. It was played between Hansen and Holst in Copenhagen in 2004. White is certainly better in this position but accuracy is still required. If Black could regroup his pieces and get his knights to b6 to blockade the past b pawn and also be defending the d6 pawn, he would improve his position massively. For now that is impossible though because the knight is tied to defending d6 from the queen. Bishop d7 is the first move that Hansen played and it's the first move in a winning strategy. The main battle here is for control of the d5 square. If white could get a knight there, it would dominate the position and generate play on both sides of the board, attacking black's other main weakness, the f6 pawn, whilst at the same time supporting the advance of the b pawn. And to achieve this, white must of course avoid the exchange of his knight for black's bishop, which would be bad in any case as many of his pawns are on light squares, so he doesn't want to be left with this inflexible light square bishop and this move bishop d7 gains initiative 2 due to the threat of bishop takes e8 followed up with queen takes d6 so black must further defend d6 now and in order to do that Holst played queen b8 so now came bishop c6 and queen d8 aiming to keep everything solid as this also defends f6 however it also allows white to initiate his plan and gain a big edge with the simple move bishop d5 which can now force the exchange of the bishops so after knight c7 comes bishop takes f7 check king takes f7 and now a very nice and purposeful move from white if you want to try and spot it then stop the video now Queen a4 is the move and it's a great one because it stops black from getting his knight to b6 which as I said would be the perfect square. For example if he tries now knight a8 to reroute the knight to b6 now comes queen a7 check. King g8 and knight d5 is absolutely hopeless for black. White is nearly three pawns up in terms of position with knight takes f6 check and if queen takes f6 Queen takes a8 check, etc. Amongst other things, resulting in a completely winning game. And what's more, the knight is now tied in this corner. The knight in d5 is dominating, and it can't move to c7 or b6, so it just gets taken because uh, the knight and the queen are together controlling these squares. So it's the idea of domination, which we'll also turn to at a later stage in the series and uh, black's pieces are just completely passive whilst whites are completely active and he can advance his b-pawn now to victory. Um, alternatively if black tries queen a8 to simplify and try and relieve the pressure on his position now comes queen takes a8, knight takes a8 and knight d5 with the same idea again this knight is completely trapped in the corner and is facing this very active knight on d5 and if the king tries to come over to support this knight then the f6 pawn is falling and in the meantime the b pawn is going to advance anyway and again black is completely lost so queen a4 is a very nice move and Hulse played queen b8 now came queen a5 which is preparing to play b6 which is kicking the knight from c7 and it's controlled of the d5 square and Holst moved his knight prematurely, he's preparing to bring it back in order to try and defend and hold for a draw. After b6 he played knight d8 stopping um, b7 
but now comes queen a7 check which forces queen b7 and there's no queen takes a7 of course or b takes a a7 and black has no way to stop the pawn from queening and now comes knight d5 very strong and dominant post for the knight and king e6 from holst and it's clear that white is of course much better here positionally and has all of the trumps and all of the play but how to convert it all into a win again if you want to try and figure out the best course of action then stop the video now g4 and the opening of a second front is easily the strongest continuation for white fritz is in agreement too feeling the pressure holst now faltered with f5 which though it isn't a blunder isn't the most resilient defense either after e takes f5 g takes f5 g5 now white is able to create a second passed pawn and open further lines to the black king here using the space on the king's side which will prove too much for black to deal with played f4 which is the best move for him now but he's already gone wrong because now comes queen a3 which is threatening to penetrate on the light squares here on the king's side and now white is gaining a winning advantage three pawns ahead in terms of position so king d7 queen h3 check king c6 trying to get to safety but now queen f3 which is threatening discovered checks and all kinds of tactics so black is ob obliged to move his king again and holst played it to d7 now comes knight f6 check which is another very strong outpost for the white knight and now black's game is lost after king e7 comes queen h5 which is threatening to take on h7 with check so king e6 and now white wants to play queen e8 check and take this knight but black has the resource queen e7 so knight d5 stops that resource and as i said now it's completely lost for black and note how the white pieces are completely dominating their black counterparts and that's what results in this massive advantage in the position to white king d7 is the best defense that black can hope for despite its allowing queen takes h7 check and after king c8 hansen played g6 and here holt resigned as his position is hopeless again the opening of the second front proved decisive and it's important to note with the principle of two weaknesses that the meaning of weakness should be interpreted broadly it can be not only a weak pawn or a square like d6 and d5 here but it can also sometimes as in this example be an entire half of the board and here it was black's king side so the winning plan in such a position is as much about opening a second front as it is about attacking specific weaknesses when under pressure playing with less space or faced with more passive pieces it's much harder to defend multiple wings or weaknesses shifting from one side to the other and probing the weaknesses is much easier for the attacking player all of these things should be taken into consideration when working out your end game strategy which of course can begin in the opening of a game in some cases so that's it for this segment i hope you found it instructive and enjoyed it please leave any comments or thoughts thanks very much